does growth hormone actually build muscle or is it overhyped? And what I'll say for anyone who is not familiar with growth hormone, if you are looking for an introductory video into, you know, this, that, and the other, maybe this will fill in the gaps, but I can already see the comments. I can already hear the complaints or, um, you know, if we look at it differently, the request for something that is a little more entry level. Um, let me know if there are things I missed in this video. If you're like, hey, can we, can we go a little bit slower? Or um, if there are things that are highly nuanced that you're like, yeah, you know, I wish you would have covered this. Definitely let me know. But question number one, does GH actually build muscle or is it overhyped? This is something that, um, like with any PED, people often, you know, oversimplify uh, what a drug is good at, uh, what it's good for. GH, it does but not in the way most people think. So it doesn't directly build tissue. T GH in itself is not something that you can just put in place, uh, change nothing, assuming that, you know, maybe you're not supporting muscle growth. Uh, it's not going to carry the team. It's not going to do the work for you, which I know that phrase is like highly overused largely by me. GH, it does set the stage for muscle growth. Now, it makes energy available. It does have the ability to mobilize fatty acids, and it tells your liver to make IGF-1. Now, this has the potential to promote growth through satellite cell activation. It's going to increase protein synthesis, and it's going to help improving in recovery. However, a lot of people tend to think, I can just put GH in place. Um, it's going to, you know, catapult my um, my muscle growth, my muscle gain. It It's very subtle. It's not something, um, and we'll get into this in a different question, but it's not something that um, I would say is comparable to an anabolic. And if you've used anabolics in the past and you're just going into using GH, expecting that same benefit, that same result in terms of hypertrophy, uh, you're probably going to be disappointed. Now, realistically, even if you're doing everything right, I think it's important to have very realistic expectations. You are not going to explode in six weeks. Um, on the female side, if you've used Anavar on the male side, if you've even just started test six weeks on GH, I mean, like, yes, there are going to be benefits and it can help you potentiate muscle growth. Um, and let me be clear, I'm a big fan of GH. I, I think it has a place in a lot of people's protocols, but it's certainly something that I've run into where I've had clients uh, interested in exploring it. And realistically, I think they thought it was going to be a one-to-one -one comparison to an anabolic in terms of its potential to build. And uh, sadly, that's not the case. But over 12, 16, 20 weeks, the physique changes are real. Obviously, this is going to be dose-dependent, and we have to take in comorbidities um, as to whether or not we're even going to use GH, which, again, we're going to get into in this video. But if training and food aren't on point, if you are not training in a way to support muscle growth, uh, it's not going to do anything special. Now, I will say uh, hair, skin, nails, collagen synthesis. This is one uh, I, I notice. Like, it's very apparent um, and in a positive way, not in the way that I've kind of described with um, virilization, like in other videos where I'm talking about like facial hair growth um, or even like just like darker hair that's like different from, um, um, again, on the female side, what you're used to. Um, more specifically, head hair. Um, yes, body hair, but not in uh, necessarily that alteration of the follicle itself. Um, I am not describing that very well, but overall, very positive in terms of collagen synthesis. I see that in my own use, um, and I am at two IUs a day. Question number two, can you run GH by itself and still get the benefits? Yes, yes, you can, especially if we're talking about fat loss. Even in the state of someone who is under-recovered, uh, performance athletes who, you know, Maybe are at the maximum, you know, they're at the ceiling in which they can recover from, but they're wanting to at least maintain that performance because they're not able to currently with that recovery capacity. Um, big opportunities there. Now, if your goal is purely hypertrophy, GH in itself, it is going to be a slow burn. And realistically, you're going to get better results stacking it with some kind of anabolic androgenic steroid. Now, 
That is not to say that if you're using GH, the answer is also to put a steroid in. But mechanistically, if you're looking for synergy, that is something that is going to be more favorable than just having GH in place. Now, ladies, um, when it comes to TRT, this is going to have some synergy working alongside of it. And realistically, this is what I mean when I say stacking it with an androgen. If there is merit, if there is a reason to have TRT in place, I think it could make a lot of sense. GH is a non-anabolic androgenic PED. It is not going to cause um, androgenic properties. It's not going to put you at risk for virilization. So even though, yes, technically you can get more out of GH having it alongside an anabolic steroid, it's not something that um, you should take from this video as a green light for me to put it in on account of just having GH in place. Now, GH alone is going to help improve nutrient partitioning. So how you actually utilize the calories that you're ingesting. It's going to help with, like I said, collagen synthesis training output. And the reference range, which actually, no, I'm going to say that for a different question because I, I know there's one specifically on IGF-1. Um, but the starting dose, that's actually, yeah, that's how I want to tackle this. Uh, a lot of athletes will start male and female, will start anywhere between one and three IUs. In a deficit, this will help speed up the fat loss process. You're likely going to see a little bit of fullness, um, less muscle loss. You're probably, especially if this is something that you struggle with historically, you're going to see an improvement in sleep. So specifically, that primary tool we have for recovery, that's largely how GH is going to help you recover better. Now, I've had both men and women run GH just on its own, and they have seen vast improvements in recovery, performance, and overall muscle growth. Now, keep in mind, these are individuals who their testosterone, naturally, their endogenous production was already in a really solid range.